Hello everybody, welcome to Tangle 14. I'll start by fixing the snags from last episode. First one is illegal character. Okay. All right, I know what's going on here. We have to separate out the, the, the replacement parameter from the word key here. See if we get past that. That one worked and it looks like the new one is because I used the key instead of the ID. All right, made it through to set author, which is part of the put test, but we haven't written the put rest controller method yet or the delete. So let's go into the controller and the put mapping will be almost identical to the post mapping. They're both saving. Change that to put. I don't need a URI this time. And that's it for this one. And then the delete is likewise very simple. Only this time we're just going to call repo delete by key. It's another one of these things that we have to define ourselves. And more spring magic where it reaches out and figures out in the field. And then this is just return. Put breakpoints in both of these and go. Okay, so it stopped in the delete mapping, which is further than the put. So I just didn't have a breakpoint that caught it earlier. Let's look at this error message. And method not allowed. That's probably because the call and this are not matching. So this one's expecting an entry without a key. Yeah, see, this is this is the problem. It's, it's using the key version of it. So we just want the plain bean and get rid of this. Let's see if we can get further this time. All right, this time we're in the put entry so that it matches. We know that it matches. So let's see if, if it works. Okay made it through to entry author is it wants to have Rainier Rilke and it is correct so this should pass so let's and now we're into delete let's just make sure just keep going and make sure that put worked here's a helpful thing if you click this check mark it shows the ones that have passed so that shows that put worked now run again for delete skip through with f9 and see if there's an error. Okay. This looks familiar to me. I can't remember. Luckily the internet will remember for me. I'm just gonna paste the whole error message in and sure enough, we have stack overflow, go down and transactional. Okay, so that's something that I did not put in my rest controller class you can get rid of all your breakpoints temporarily by clicking mute breakpoints so let's let's run this straight through all right so then what's going on here expected one let's take a look at the entry length one it's um here and we'll run it again all right this is the first one we're still in post. And then this is the breakpoint. Okay, so let's see, what are we looking for? It's saying that it's looking for a length of three. The actual list is, so this is correct. Oh, my test is wrong. Yeah, we start with two and then we delete one. So it should be, let's look at the test. <laughs> yeah, that definitely happens sometimes. All right. 
I'm feeling good about this. Let's see. Let's turn off the breakpoints and just go from the beginning. Hopefully we get it all green. There you have it. All green. The entire feature file passed, which means we are done with our ticket. Now that I have some code worth keeping, let's do our first commit into GitHub. And we had set it up earlier, so if we go to the repository, there's nothing in it. And so it's going to give you some helpful hints about how to how to create your first commit on the command line. So let's go here. And let me just double check my editor. This is your default editor on the command line, which Git uses. So I'm going to put in a an export here because I want to use Emacs. And then source the file. And go back to my working directory. And now I can do what they're telling me to do. So the first thing is this line is just going to create a readme, which is really basic. And then get a knit is going to create your Git repository in the project. So you can see it created this dot git file, which is where everything git gets stored. Here, I'll just look in here for you. And so these are all things that help you do version control. And then we're going to add the readme to the working set of things that are going to get checked in. And so before I do my first commit, I want to tell git who I am. And to do that, you do git config global and edit. And this is why I wanted to set Emacs. Okay, so it's going to say that I'm Tangle in this, which I'm not. So I'm going to uncomment that and put in tfal and my email address. Okay. And so now anything that I commit is going to be tagged with those attributes. So let's do our first commit. And it worked, but it's still local. And then we're going to create a branch called main. And it's going to be you know, the main branch throughout. And then this is, this is the thing that actually pushes it to GitHub. It's remote add origin GitHub. And then this is the address of the repo. Now it still hasn't done anything. You just added this line here as this symbol called origin before we do what's called a push to github i need to tell github who i am right now it knows me as big fractal and i don't want to use that account so i need to invite a collaborator and add people, and then put in my email address. I need to switch to my personal account and accept it. Pause. Here's my email. Click view invitation, and then log in. Accept the invitation, and now I'm in here. I'm going to need a personal access token to log in. You can't use passwords anymore. So I'm going into here and settings, scroll down at the, to the bottom where it says developer settings, and then do personal access tokens. You get a choice between fine grain tokens and classic tokens. We're going to use classic tokens because they haven't worked out all the kinks in the fine grained yet. And then up here it says generate new token. Give it a name, I'll just say uh, Tangle TFL. Give it the longest possible. And then just check mark everything. And then generate. Okay, so I'm going to copy this and then put it in my GitHub account in one password. This acts just like a password. Let's go back to my initial commit lists. 
just down here. And I'm going to do this. Put some my username. And then instead of the password that you might pick, put in your token. And it pushed it to public repository. So let's have a look. Hit refresh. And there it is. There's my readme file. So let's add the rest of the files. Double check that I'm in my work directory. And then I'm going to do a git add period. That's going to add everything in the working directory except files that are in the git ignore file here. I'll show you that first. So this was created in Spring Initializer. So there's a bunch of things that it starts out with extensions and other things. So let's go ahead and do it. Git add period. <laughs> in classic Linux fashion, it doesn't come back with any answers. So this just means that it worked. If you want to see that it worked before you push it, you can do git status and it'll tell you uh, this status of all files. And you can see right here, it says new file, new file, new file, new file, all of these things. It's actually not a bad thing to review and make sure that you really want, like, like, I don't want that. That should be in the git ignore file. And everything else. Yep. See, I got more of these. All right. I'm going to do that. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. And I'll make a new section here. Now I've already added these. These are added to my local repository, but not to GitHub. So again, here's another thing that I don't want you to pay attention to. This is a Linux thing. It's going to remove those files from my local staging area. So it shouldn't show up here. All right. Since I already added it, it wants me to use an F. This means that I really want it removed. Now look at get status again. And you can see that those have been removed. And it reminds me that I haven't added new changes to get ignore. So I'm going to do that. And now it's beautiful and waiting to get committed, get a commit. And then you always put some kind of description here. And I'm just going to call it initial commit like the one before. It added them all. I simply do git push and go check it out. Refresh. And our code is now on GitHub. You can go into source and then see all of the stuff that we've got. Some of the command line stuff might be a little confusing. Luckily, most of the time you're using Git, you'll be doing it within IntelliJ. So let's make sure that IntelliJ is all set up here as well. I'm going to go into settings, down version control, and GitHub is its own little page. I'm going to add an account. Login via token. And it knows from the token who I am. I hit OK. And then it's this thing over here. I usually put it over here. I just picked up this icon and I can move it to this side. So you can see our initial commit and our first commit. Now the other thing that's really nice is that anytime you make a change, you can click on this icon over here and see it. And it helps you to review what things you've done since the last commit. So for example, if I just put in blah, it's going to tell you there's a change. If I double click on it, it actually tells me exactly what I did, which is blah. Click this arrow to revert and set. Close Git. Another important thing to look at here is that you can see the word main. That's our current branch. So if I click on that, I can do various things having to do with Git. But most importantly, I can create new branches and work on them separately from the main branch. You should treat the main branch as sacrosanct. It should only have working code. So you can continue to work on your own stuff in your own branch and 
then merge your branch with the main branch later once it's proven that it's good. For now, I'm just going to make something up and call it deploy to Docker. And then you can see up here, it has the branch. And if you look in the Git repository, it locally has this branch called deploy to Docker. So let's do that. To put the app into Docker, we need a Docker file. So I'm going to do new file and then Docker file. So that's with a capital D and a lowercase f, all one word. And now it's going to start asking me if I want to add stuff to Git, which is nice. So I'll say yes, add. And let's keep it as simple as possible. So you put from and then the Docker image name at the top. And in this case, it's open JDK 21, which is the version. And the next thing I want to do is copy the built jar file from the target directory. So just to show you, if you look into the target directory of, um, you'll see that there's jar file and we don't want to have all this gobbledygook in there. We just want to make it as simple as possible. So I'm going to copy target jar to app jar. And then the last thing we need is an entry point, which is basically the command that gets run when Docker starts up. So, so that's the equivalent of running the command Java jar app jar in Docker on the command line. We can try this out by doing Docker build and give our image a name. So it's going to be big fractal and then slash tangle and then put period for this directory. So it's going to be smart enough to find the Docker file and do it. Let's look in here and I'll show you. So now there's a big fractal tangle image in my local uh, Docker repository to run it. We also need to have the Postgres thing going at the same time. So what's nice is to run it together in uh, a Docker compose file. Think of Docker files as creating images and Docker compose files, uh, putting together a bunch of images together. First, I want to rename this to tangle DB, just because we're going to be talking uh, between these different services. So I'm going to create my new service. I'll call this one tangle app. And I'm going to give my container a name. Otherwise it makes up its own name, which is a pain in the neck. Tangle app. The image is what I defined earlier on the command line, which is big fractal tangle. I want to expose the ports. So just do 80, 80, 80, 80. All right, ports, you got to do this. And then I'm going to say that this depends on this guy up here, which is another one of these lists. Last, I'm going to create an environment like I did up above. And this is a rabbit hole. So I'm just going to do it and we can explain it later. But essentially you don't want to have these properties in the application YAML file. And there's a lot of reasons for now. The only one that really matters is that it's not going to understand local host. So I'm going to grab all of these and put them in here as spring environment variables. Now the big thing to know is that localhost, what we want to do is just take the service name and then Docker's going to be smart enough to connect these two together, but it does require the internal port because it's within Docker. Let me get rid of these spaces. These are a pain. And last, let's get rid of my properties here. Let's give it a try. Do a clean build. I'll explain this later. Run Docker build again and do Docker compose up. And it says start a Tangle application. So our app is running in Docker. See you next time.